guys, welcome to another episode of So Not Scary. In today's episode, we're going to look at how you can do bookbinding at home using your mini sewing machine. So let's go ahead and get started. So I've got two different types of bookbinding ideas up my sleeve that I want to talk to you about. The first one is how you can sell paper signatures using your mini sewing machine and then use those paper signatures to use as part of a traveler's notebook or a fedori like I also talked about in an earlier episode. And the second idea that I have is about how you can use your paper signatures to actually create a finished book from scratch, okay? So for this first part of the bookbinding method, I've got my daughter's old homework books and classwork books, okay? These were sent home from school at the end of last year um, and I chopped away the pages which were used up and we are left with these pristine pages, okay? And I think the cover page is quite cute as well. It's very blue. I'm gonna salvage some of this. Uh, I've got this notebook which is also full of lined paper. Granted, it's like kitty writing paper, but hey, we can still use this. It's perfectly good. Um, again, there is more books, mat, squares, and I think these green ones are blank. So this is lovely. This is lovely uh, blank paper that we can use. Okay, and again, we will be salvaging the covers as well. Okay, so the first step is going to be we're going to take some paper out of these guys. Okay, and then determine how thick we want our traveler's notebook to be. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to start cutting the pages away little by little, okay? There, that's done. Now, if you don't know what a signature is, a signature is actually a set of pages bound together and then they become part of an overall book, okay? So I've been experimenting with our mini sewing machine and it can cope very well with signatures of up to six pages, okay? But I'm gonna take it easy today and I'm gonna make signatures of four pages each, okay? So this is what I'm gonna do. If I fold one page over all the way in half, you can see it's quite broad. I don't want my book to be as broad as that. So I'm only gonna fold it this way, okay? And that part of the paper I don't want to use. So what do I do? I'm going to get rid of that. So I'm going to cut this away. Okay. So that part of the pages has been cut away. I can use this to create like a grocery list or something. And what we're left with is this stack of papers. So the first one's folded in half, and now I'm going to start folding the rest of them in half as well. Here we go. That's the last page. Okay, so now that all of our papers have been folded up, we're going to take something called a bone folder. I just need a straight hard edge to press down the creases. So here we go. We're going to start at the bottom. Okay, and we just go like so, okay. Now we're going to assemble them into what is called a signature. So we're gonna take four folded pieces of paper and tuck them one inside the other. So that's one, that's two, 
that's the third one and that's the fourth one okay and I'm going to that is one signature and I'm going to repeat the process with all of these pages So now we're going to clip each signature together. I'm going to take some bulldog clips, just some little ones, and take one signature, open it up, and just clip it. One on this side, and the other one on the other side, so maybe here. Okay, so do you see how it's clipped? So I'm going to do the same with the other signatures and get back to you. Hey guys, so we're at our mini sewing machine now and let me show you what I've done so far. So all the signatures that we just created together by folding papers in half and tucking four pages together, one inside the other, I've just clipped them together, okay? Now here's my mini sewing machine and I've got a white top thread and a white bobbin thread in there as well. Now, if you don't know how to do this, follow the links down below. That'll teach you how to thread your mini sewing machine using the P for Perfect method and the Nifty 9 method, okay? It's super quick, super easy, and you'll be able to do that in no time. Now, here's the plan. This is where the sewing comes in when you're binding your book, okay? We're simply gonna open up uh, each signature and do a straight stitch all the way from the top, following the crease all the way down to the bottom. Press, and now I'm going to start sewing. Right, that's the first signature stitched up. Let's look at the top thread. It seems to have come through just fine. No skip stitches there. And on the back, well, perfect. No skip stitches. Everything is fine. So let's continue to do that with the rest of the signatures. Here we go. Okay, so all of our signatures have now been stitched together, okay? I'm just going to pull out the threads on either side of these little guys, okay? So I've simply just snipped the threads off, okay? Um, and this is what we're left with, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've got an odd number of signatures here, but that's absolutely fine. It's not gonna affect us, okay? Now what I'm going to do is since we are working with a traveler's notebook kind of a system, I'm going to tuck three signatures, one inside the other. One, two, three, okay? That's one set. I'm gonna tuck three more, one inside the other. That's the other set. Because one is left behind, I'm just gonna tuck it in as well. Okay, now let's move on to the next step, which is making the cover for this. Guys, if this video is making sense, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'm a new channel and your support is so appreciated. Let's move on. I was digging around in my paper stash and I found this beautiful pastel rose bouquet or flower bouquet print card stock. We've got our um, signatures ready here. So I'm gonna clip them together as close as possible to the spine, okay? So there they are, and I'm going to keep them with the pages facing outwards towards the edge, okay? I'm going to leave a little bit of a margin, maybe about that bit, and now I'm going to turn it over, keeping the spine in contact with the card, and turn it over again. 
And so on this side, I know it has to be slightly longer than the width of these pages on this side. So maybe here, I make a mark here, okay? Now lengthwise as well, it has to be a little bit longer at the bottom and a little bit longer at the top as well, okay? So I'm going to make a mark here. These two are going to be our cutting marks. So we're going to cut along these and these lines. So first I'm going to draw straight lines there, okay? I've got a quilting ruler here, but you could use a protractor or anything with a 90 degree edge, okay? And this quilting ruler has got 90 degrees marks. So I can just put it on the edge of my paper or cardstock and I know I can line it up one line with the edge and with this mark as well. Okay, so let's just cut along those lines. I've put my project onto a cutting mat. Okay, so the next stage is to make this cover as protective as possible, which means you have to reinforce the cover. You've got a bunch of different options to do that. The most easiest and fastest option is to simply laminate this, which I'm going to do on my little laminator. Hey, so now I've laminated the cardstock that I showed you earlier, and I think it looks really pretty. Okay, as you can see. Um, and now what we have to do is score this to create the cover. How do we do that? We only need to take a ruler and measure out where the rough midpoint is going to be. Here, on number 12. Okay, there's the mark, okay. I'm going to align that mark with one of the scoring lines there, okay. And I'm simply going to run my bone folder all the way down. Here we go. But because this is laminated, we have to do it on the other side as well, just to... We're gonna fold it over. Now what I'm going to do is trim the edges, okay? Okay, for the next step, I'm just going to really finish off the cover by rounding the corners before we punch it, okay? So here's my corner punch, and I'm just going to round the corners off. The corners are rounded off nicely, okay? Let's move on to the next step. Okay, so for the next step, we need to mark holes where we are going to install the eyelets, okay? So I'm going to measure one centimeter down from the top edge, okay? And now I'm going to measure half a centimeter on either side of that mark. So that's the first, that's the second, okay? We'll do it on the opposite edge as well. Now for the middle, what we have to do is measure the length of this, split it in half, and then put a mark there. But I've made quite a few of these covers at home now, and there's a problem with that. When you install an eyelet right down the spine, it's gonna give you trouble folding over. So instead of putting an eyelet in the spine, we will install it just beyond the spine, okay? Now, I have got an eyelet kit which allows me to punch holes and install the eyelets. So I'm going to go do that, install the eyelets and come back to you and show you what that looks like. Hi guys, so I've now installed the eyelets in the cover and let me show you what it looks like now. So this is going to be the front. You can see there's an eyelet right there on the top and another one on the back right there. There's an eyelet right there at the bottom and another one right there, okay. And in the middle, on the back, there is an eyelet just off center, okay. So when you open it, this is what it looks like. Let me show it to you sideways. See? Five holes. One, two, three, four, five. Now it's time to do the stringing. So let me show you how we do that. 
Okay, so in front of me, I've got a reel of elastic cord. And for this cover, I'm going to use a length of cord, which is slightly longer than twice the length of the cover, okay? So if stringing the cord is a fairly simple procedure, just remember out in, out in, okay? So first we have to go out through a top hole. Okay, then we have to come back in again. That's one out in. And then we have to go out again. And then we have to come back in again. That's your out in, out in stringing. And now we're going to loosely knot this up. You can see I've deliberately kept the knot a bit loose so we can adjust it if we need to, okay? Now we have to string one more thing, which is put the string down that middle hole. Let me show you how we do that. For the middle hole, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the string and wrap it loosely around the dory cover, okay? Now for the middle hole, we have to pass this cord that we just cut off from the outside through to the inside. But before we do that, I found this really cute button. It says handmade with love and I'm thinking of stringing this onto the cord as well. And once again, I'm going to do a loose knot here, okay? So here I've got an ordinary single hole paper punch and I've just clipped the cover closed so it's not in the way. So I'm going to cut a notch right there. Can you guys see that? Okay, and now the string can just slot in there. Okay, that'll reduce the stress on the edge of the cover, okay? Okay, so here are the signatures we'd made earlier and we cut them one inside the other. I'm just going to quickly clip them together. And now we're just going to trim the edges to make sure everything looks neat and well put together. Okay, so here's the finished cover we've just made and these are the gorgeous pages that we just sewed together using our mini sewing machine, okay? Uh, and now we're going to put these inside the cover and see how that looks. And now I'm going to grab one set of signatures, open them down the middle and insert them through one loop. And now there's the other set, open it down the middle. Now if you want to, you can trim the edges shorter, but let me just show you what it looks like without trimming. So that's the first set of signatures that we sewed together on our sewing machine. That's the second set. Look how smoothly everything is flowing. Just close it, close it. Put the cord on and there you have it and there you have it guys book binding part one using our mini sewing machine where we stitched all the signatures together using just this little machine okay and I'm super pleased with the end result let me quickly show you what that looks like so that's our binding cord and when we open that those are the pages and I've actually tied down the uh, extra length of string just so in future if I need to adjust it I can always do that and they're not flopping around okay 
But the proudest moment really for me is how easily we manage to salvage and reuse old homework notebooks and homework diaries and papers which are just left randomly lying around our homes. We can just simply cut them up and shape them into whatever we want to using something so simple as a mini sewing machine. Look at the stitch lines, they're sitting so neatly, okay? And the closure is super simple. There we go, okay. Um, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial, guys. In part two, I'm going to be carrying our signature stitching one step further, and you're actually going to make a complete book. Not one of these folder-like things, like a traveler's journal, not one of these, but a proper, completely stitched book from scratch using our mini sewing machine. If you like this tutorial, guys, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye!